And up in the CNMI, the Commonwealth faces another possible uphill battle with a proposal for an increase in the minimum wage to $15 an hour, joining a national movement to raise the wage. CNMI correspondent Tomas Manglotnia has our next story. A long shot. That's how Congressman Gregorio Sablon described the process to raise the wage. It is such a way where the business also is impacted so badly that uh, they have to shrink or they, you know, ultimately close down. So it's, it's still a work in progress. Sablon, who co-sponsored Raise the Wage Act with support from over 150 colleagues in Congress, says the act increases the federal minimum wage in phases to $15 by 2024. The act applies to those who work 40-plus hours a week. Local senators under House Bill 19-23 passed in 2016 approved increases of local minimum wage to $7.25 by 2018. Minimum wage will be $7.05 this September. Small business owner Glenn Hunter says he pays his staff of about seven people at the Shack restaurant slightly above the minimum wage for his five-year-old establishment. So it makes sense. There should always be inflation is always going up. Other costs are always rising. It just makes sense that that floor should always be rising. The floor rising is an issue receiving mixed emotions from the community. Some saying the CMI's infrastructure cannot withstand such an increase. Hunter notes that if wage is suppressed, then trouble will most likely follow. It's not a surprise to hear from other businesses that they would be opposed to such a measure. But, I mean, since, since living here for you know, more than a decade again and more than four decades uh, calling this place home, um, there's always been challenges. Aside from raising the wage, Hunter explains other issues plague the small business community. Maybe what we can do is change the dialogue and start looking at how do you support small businesses? What do you need to incentivize them, to help them, to, to keep them in business? I'm going on, like I said, five years now. It's been a struggle, but I can tell you, like, from day one, we've been profitable. Glenn Hunter telling PNC News that bigger businesses, bigger players in the game, such as foreign investors of establishments like the one behind me, often are the recipients of breaks and exemptions that small businesses are not offered. Even after Typhoon Sudalore, which his business is still recovering from, Hunter believes more could be done to help small businesses. He notes that the islands have a unique economic and labor situation and history. For small business owners such as Glenn Hunter, the issue isn't singular. It's not just about minimum wage. It's multifaceted, including utilities and incentives. Reporting for the Pacific News Center, I'm Tomas Manglonia. All right, thanks, Tomas, for that report.